The NFL Draft is one month away. With so many options and decisions, what will Howie Roseman do on draft night? We explore what options may be available and how the Eagles can win the night. But first, let's run it. Hey guys, Josh Davis here. Hope you're all having a great weekend. Please make sure to like and subscribe. The Philadelphia Eagles are on the clock. We will hear those words in one month. It's hard to believe, but we're that close to draft night and I'm super excited. I can't wait to see what's gonna transpire, who the picks will be, uh, it, it's fascinating, all the storylines. I know all the headlines and the big names, and B. John Robinson is the, probably the top of that list, but I cannot wait to see what happens. And so I figured we did a mock draft pre-free agency. Now that we're kind of past the big flux of actually what happened and all the all the signings and the big news and everything there, it's about time to do another mock draft. So we've set this one up. It's mock draft 2.0. The ground rules for this are going to be kind of similar to last time, but we're going to put our Howie caps on, try to think of what Howie would do in these scenarios. So I'm going to try to be a little bit less of a fan and more of realistic in terms of what we think and anticipate how he will do. Obviously, what we do here probably will be different because how he never ceases to amaze us, but we kind of like his MO and what he's after. So we're going to do that. I'm using Pro Football Focus, uh, their mock draft simulator. You guys have probably used it a number of times. Highly recommend if you haven't. Uh, and also, just to let you know, I'm going to just kind of take everything with the standard settings. I'm not going for anything crazy or randomness or anything like that. Um, we can look at some trades. We'll see if we get into it. Um, I'm definitely not going to force trades or do anything crazy as well as I'm only going to go four rounds. So I'll do it with the Eagles here, obviously. Uh, but the, the four rounds that we're going to go really only makes sense because again, remember we've got the Eagles, as you see the 10th pick, the 30th pick, the 62nd and the 94th. I know we've got the 219 and the 248, the two seventh rounders, but quite honestly, it doesn't make sense to do that. Uh, we're just guessing at that point. If you're not, then kudos to you and you know more than 99% of people. So we're going to go four rounds. We'll see what kind of grade we can get if we can knock this out of the park and also maybe how realistically you guys think this will be. And also too, this draft is a one-time recording. So just to let you know, I'm not re-recording this or doing this multiple times. We're just going to see what we can get. So recording here now, uh, Carolina Panthers are on the clock. And so uh, as you remember, they traded away all these uh, dr- or traded away the draft picks and DJ Moore and all the equity and everything else to get this selection. So hopefully they have a good idea of who they want. So the Carolina Panthers are on the clock. And we see that they select C.J. Stroud. So that wouldn't surprise me with Josh McCown and how he was uh, talking to C.J. Stroud during his pro day. So C.J. Stroud there, Texans get Bryce Young, Jalen Carter to the Cardinals, the Colts get Will Anderson, the Seahawks, Peter Skaronsky. Wow, that's pretty pretty high for Peter Skaronsky. But uh, Devin Witherspoon, six to the Lions, Anthony Richardson to the Raiders, the Falcons get Will Levis. This is great news for Eagles fans. That many quarterbacks off the board. And Tyree Wilson at nine. So here we go. At 10, Eagles on the clock. The Philadelphia Eagles on the clock. At 10, uh, you see we've got Christian Gonzalez. I'm not looking at Quentin Johnson because, again, I don't think that's an a immediate look at all. Nor is Jackson Smith and Jigba. Um, Kalijah Kansi, that's one I'm very high on. If you've caught any shows, you know that I'm high on him. Brian Branch is another, I think, without question, and this is probably a no-brainer, but he's the best safety in the draft. I just don't know that you draft him this high. So I would take a look at these trades and see if there's any potentials that we can move or trade back. So the Jets at 13, um, I'm not going to say this is with the Jets at this point. It, it's We're waiting on the Packers and what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers or the situation there, but we're going to say that that's not available. But the Chargers at 21, That could be a possibility. Maybe look at trading back to get the 21st pick. Um, So let's just see if that's even something that we could do because I think if you're looking at this right now, yes, you could say Christian Gonzalez like we looked at previously, but I think Howie's hoping that we get someone who starts on day one. And granted, Christian Gonzalez is very talented, but I don't know that he comes in and battles with Slay or Bradbury to start. Now, you obviously want that depth, so I'm not saying it's a bad pick, but I want to see what this would look like and even if we could trade it. So let's trade away 10 to the Chargers for 21, and let's say maybe we go with a 54 and uh maybe get it maybe get the following year on a, on a round two so we'll get 21 54 and a round two in 2024 we're going to go ahead and make this trade or offer it um and it got accepted now again i'm not going to just force through trades or anything like that so try to do it a little bit realistic because i know you i've seen lots of mock drafts where it's, it's ridiculous trading and you come out with all these extra picks we're not going to do that so something relatively realistic there i know you're trading back and, and you're having to give up a good bit here but uh i i want to see what type of draft equity we can get obviously picking up a second pick um, or an extra pick in this draft. So here we go. We made the trade. This to me is a home run. Take a look at the board. 
We've got Kalijah Kansi still on the board. If you can trade back from 10, you pick up an extra selection. Now we've also got another one for 2024, which is already stockpiled. We've got another second round pick and Kalijah Kansi is on the board. To me, that's almost a given, a guarantee of you have to go after Kalijah Kansi. I could be wrong here. Maybe you want to say you go Brian Branch. Again, I wouldn't I wouldn't totally knock you for doing that. He is a great safety. But I think that Kalijah Kansi is the type of player that can be a game wrecker. And you pair, pair him up with Jordan Davis. You pair him up with the other defensive linemen. I think Kalijah Kansi could be a day one starter. So at 21, the Philadelphia Eagles select Kalijah Kansi, defensive tackle from Pitt. And so it says here, where he wins, twitch. Kansi is a wound up defensive tackle who does everything with urgency. His hands are just as quick as his feet and he knows how to use both. What's his role? A penetrating three technique defensive tackle. If you're asking him to play inside, you better allow Kansi the freedom to get upfield. He simply can't be a hold the point defensive tackle. His skill set is also intriguing from some rotational reps on the edge. What can he improve? Playing under control. The size shortcomings aren't going anywhere, but Kansi is much better at working around them when his hands aren't in such a hurry. All right, there you go. And again, he had phenomenal testing at the combine. The crazy athleticism that he has, like it says there, he's a little bit slight, but I think this is a fantastic pick. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I think thumbs up for Kalijah Kansi, but let, let me know what you guys think. So we selected Kansi. Now, we obviously have uh, the 30th selection, and I'm going to pause it here for a second because let's take a look and see what the, the draft is right now. Uh, and, and obviously, too, you can take a look at the board. So Bijan Robinson is not selected. Now, the question becomes, do you trade up at this point and try to go get him? The, the Jaguars are on the clock. Jacksonville's on the clock. Cowboys are about to be. And so the, the rumor and speculation is that maybe the Cowboys are going to be targeting Bijan Robinson. Remember, we just traded with the Los Angeles Chargers to get that extra selection. So we had the extra selection in this draft. Maybe this is the time to see about trading up. So let's see if we could get the 24th selection here. So we, we try to get the 24th, maybe get up there and get Bijan at this point. I think that could make sense. Uh, but with the 30th selection, the 24th here with the Jaguars, uh, and then let's try to offer, let's see, maybe the fourth round uh, for next year. So a 30th and a fourth, uh, we're going to move up six spots. So we'll offer that trade, see if the Jaguars are willing to do it. And they did. So there you go. We've moved up now. This to me Here's your question. You just moved up. Do you take Brian Branch or Bijan Robinson? I think the only way that you're moving up in this instance is because you've seen the Cowboys are about there. You're wanting to trade up and get Bijan Robinson. So I think this makes sense. Do you go ahead and draft him? I think you do. Uh, he's a generational type talent. Over, over the weeks, I have grown to liking this idea, this thought of bringing him in with his unstoppable offense. If you get Bijan Robinson and add him to the mix, I think it's off the charts. I mean, good luck being able to stop this offense. I know you need defensive holes. We did just get Kalijah Kansi. There's other picks that we have in this draft. We have three more remaining, so I think you can fill some holes with those. Um, but this point right here, I say go for it. You take Bijan Robinson and uh, make the Cowboys upset too that you took him right in front of him. So we're going to select Bijan Robinson. The Philadelphia Eagles at the 24th pick select Bijan Robinson, running back out of Texas. Where he wins, completeness. Robinson has answers for everything. He can run with power, speed, or elusiveness. He set the PFF single season broken tackle record this past fall with 104. What's his role? Feature back. Robinson is more than just a bell cow. He's a back that you make the focal point of your offense. Whether that's 15 plus carries a game or scheming up targets as a receiver, you want the ball consistently in his hands. What can he improve? Fumbles. This is about the only thing that really moves the needle negatively with Robinson. His six fumbles on 539 carries could stand to get cleaned up. I think, again, if you've hit on these two picks, we are we are rock solid. And by the way, make sure to remember, if you're joining any of the Wednesday live shows and you drop a super chat, you could have your pick at either a Bijan Robinson Eagles jersey or a Kalijah Kansi Eagles jersey. So more details on that if you follow or check out any of the Wednesday live shows with Thomas Mott, the Wednesday link at 7 o'clock Eastern every Wednesday leading up to the draft. We're also going to have live draft coverage the night of the first round, Thursday, and the second and third round on Friday. So be sure to check that out. Uh, but you could have one of those jerseys at that point um, if those are the two that are selected. So now now we're moving back, obviously, a good ways to the 54th selection. So we remember uh, we traded that to move back from 10 to 17. We also picked up the 54th. So if you take a look at the board now, question becomes, 
Who do we get? We've obviously drafted Cansey on the defensive side. We've drafted Bijan Robinson, but I think you need to go after um, some of the some of the other holes or potential holes at what you need to fill at this point. So you take a look at what's on the board. We've got um, maybe a receiver in a Nathaniel Dell. Um, I know that he's a guy that a lot of people like. He's got some quick twitch, um, a possibility for for uh, kind of adding to the to the offense. Obviously, there's that third receiver that's a little bit of a question mark. So we're maybe going to take a look at defense here. Um, and Tuli Tuapilotu. I know that that's a name that everybody's been high on. Um, he is a potential. He's a potential because he's got some size. Um, he's got some really good technique uh, as well as defending blocks. I think that he could be a good potential fit. Obviously, you're looking at another defensive lineman trying to slot him in there. Garrett Williams is also a guy who seems to be kind of escalating or at least moving a little bit up draft boards. I know he's got the injury with the ACL and the knee injury. I think that he's another potential you could see uh, some teams targeting. I've, I've heard it from a lot of people, and I know you guys are, are keen to prove it or to mention it. Um, obviously, what happened the last time that we took a corner that was injured or that we targeted someone like that. So I know there's bad memories and, and kind of some bad blood with that. So I'm not saying the Eagles right here would take Garrett Williams, but I think that's a name to keep an eye on. Um, you've also got a Matthew Bergeron, a Carl Brooks. I think it's probably too early for those. Sidney Brown is a safety that I like out of Illinois, but again, I think it's a little bit too early here at 54. So I think what makes the most sense, if we're taking a look and these are the available guys, I would say, let's take Tule Tupelotu. So what we'll do is at the 54 selection, the Philadelphia Eagles select Tule Tupelotu end out of USC, where he wins, defeating blocks. Tupelotu has many answers on tape for getting around offensive linemen as any defensive lineman in this draft class. He understands his role in the defense and what freedom that affords him to make plays. What's his role? 3-4 defensive end, 3 technique. Tupelotu played primarily edge for USC in 2022, but his most impressive plays came on the interior. There, his quick twitch and quick processing ability shined. He needs to be at he needs to get a touch stronger to hold up there consistently, but he's only a junior entering the draft and will do so. What can he improve? Finishing plays. It's crazy to think that Tupelo two recorded 13 sacks and 16 other defensive stops while still leaving 16 tackles on the field last season. He has to improve in that regard. Again, I think this is a guy who could be a very potential or very big potential contributor. As you just heard, he's a very versatile player. He brings strength and quickness, and he sounds like he can kind of move back and forth a little bit on the end, maybe a little bit stronger in. End, but also move him on the inside. So you pair him up with Kalijah Cansey. You've already got several other names, obviously, with BG, Fletcher Cox, Jordan Davis, Milton Williams. There's a lot of that you can move around within that. So I like that potential, but let me know what you guys think. Is that a thumbs up or should I have done something different? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so now 62nd pick. So we're going to take a look at what's available at this point. Like I mentioned, Sidney Brown is a safety that I'm high on. So if you've got this selection here available at 62, I think that this is maybe maybe a position that you look at him. I know Carl Brooks also has some versatility. He's a very big end. You could also maybe line him up at the defensive tackle position, um, but a question mark there. It is inter interesting, too, that Garrett Williams has fallen this far by this point. Um, I would have expected him to go, but also you do have Nathaniel Dell. So I mentioned the receiver, the third one. You know, Is that someone that you target? possibly, but you're looking here now at the only other selection that we have is 94. And so at this point too, I don't think that you're going to trade. You're not really going to move back too much. Um, you've already done multiple trades. It would be shocking if you're doing another one. So we're not going to go with the trade by this point, but I think it's either a question of, do you go with safety or do you go with a Nathaniel Dell? So now this is where it becomes interesting because although I know there's defensive holes that you need to fill, I think if Dell is somehow available by this point, he's probably who you have to go with because with his speed, it could be dynamite. And you've already gotten Bijan Robinson. I know you may be asking, well, didn't we already just solidify it? But if you can get him here at this late of a, of a draft selection, I think you might want to go with that, with that type of pick because – he is a absolute game changer, a playmaker. He adds even a different dynamic and an element to this already ridiculous offense. Um, it's getting insane at this point. So I'm going to say at this point now, 62, you take Nathaniel Dell. So the Philadelphia Eagles with a 60-second pick select Nathaniel Dell, wide receiver out of Houston. What does it say here? It says, where he wins, suddenness. Dell moves across the field like he's being controlled by a joystick. His ability to stop, start, and change directions with no waste to gather steps is what wins in the league. What's his role? movable weapon. Dell is the receiver teams will be sending in motions at the snap with regularity to make opposing defenses account for his speed and dynamism. Then teams will want to get a vertical as much as possible. What can he improve? Route running efficiency. Dell can go a little overboard with his footwork setting up defenders during his route. Receivers have to get their routes in a timely manner at the NFL level to maintain the timing of the passing concept. That would be incredible. Like I say, you've already got a ridiculous offense, 
Maybe you don't have the flexibility to do that at this point. But again, I think if he's available there, it's almost a given. You just have to select him. That, that to me is a steal by that point uh, if he is still available. So again, thumbs up for Nathaniel Dell. The offense has been added to and even more explosive and more ridiculous. Maybe this isn't what's a realistic possibility and perhaps how he's going to look at more defensive holes. But we still have this last selection here. So the 94th selection, uh, and we'll take a look at what, uh, what becomes available by this point. So 94th. The Eagles are back on the clock. You take a look at the uh, the board here. This almost has to be defense, right? Because we've gone so offensively uh, by this point. Um, you're trying to look at, at solidifying some sort of area, whether it be on the, the defensive line, maybe a cornerback or a safety. Um, so let's just take a quick look. We're just we're gonna go through here uh, and let's let's pull up the safeties too, because I know we've we've lost on a couple of them. Um, but Christopher Smith is a possibility. He's a guy that um, I'm interested in. He's a guy as a safety, you know, 5'11". Um, He's got some some good movement. Obviously, played at Georgia, so he understands the game. He's he's a gamer. Um, but J. L. Skinner is is another name that I've seen kind of rising up draft boards in the sense of he's a bigger, taller um, safety. But he has some issues from what everyone's been saying, or kind of kind of what I've been reading, uh, as far as he's a little bit rigid and he doesn't have fluidity as much as some other safeties. So that could be a question mark, especially when you're talking about trying to cover uh, or be able to move across the field. If he needs more help, or maybe if he just has to play more of that slot corner, you know that could work, but I don't know at this point if that's the, the type of guy that you're going to go after. So I think at this point, um, again, 94 selection, you're a little bit guessing at this point too, but the fact that Christopher Smith is available, I would say, let's go ahead and draft him. Let's solidify the safety need. We've got, we've already got Justin Evans as we've signed. We'll take Christopher Smith. That wraps up the draft. And now let's see what the grade we get. What do we do with the trades, with the selections? What grade do they give us here? So an A minus. Okay. So that, that's not too bad. I would take that. If you're going to give me an A minus, um, for those draft selections for what we got and the trades you see here, uh, again, as a recap. So we got Kalijah Cansey at 21 for an A minus. We got a B plus for the trade that we executed, traded up to get B. John Robinson at 24. They give us a C for that, a C for the trade with Jacksonville, a B plus for Tuli Tupelotu an A for Nathaniel Dale. That's what I'm talking about. It, it's, you kind of had to take him in that position as much as you do need defense. It's a pick you have to go after and then Christopher Smith, a B minus at 94. So overall, an A minus grade, thumbs up for that. I think if you get this draft on draft night, we're going to be ecstatic. I know I would be, but let me know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. Where did I miss? What should I have done differently? Should I have gone after somebody else? Is this totally ridiculous? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Also wanted to make a quick mention because I've been having questions and, and comments, kind of uh, recommendations from several of you guys of, of will we be doing videos on who the Eagles should target? Yes, we will definitely do that. So we're a month away, obviously, from the draft. I'm going to start doing probably once a week, maybe a, t a couple times a week of some of these mid round guys, because I think all of us have looked at it enough to know basically what we're going to get in the first round, but it's the second and third and maybe even fourth round guys that are kind of question marks on our radar. So I'm going to be doing some research, taking a look at some scouting reports, obviously pro football focus, some other reading that I can do uh, and putting together some packages of some potential prospects, guys that we can target. So make sure to like, and subscribe, turn the notifications on because there's so much more content to come leading up to draft night. Um, appreciate the, the support as always, though. Until next time, I'm Josh Davis, and this has been the Philly Special.